Okay, I'm here with uh, Brother Rashid. Hello. Um, hello, Brother Rashid. Thank yeah. you so much for being with us. You're and, welcome. Uh, um, Brother Rashid uh, is one of my heroes in the faith, and uh, I don't want to put anybody on a pedestal because we're all human. But uh, but uh, I asked Brother Rashid that I've been following him for many years, and we did some conferences together, and he's just uh, a wonderful man of God and I respect him so much and I asked Brother Rashid if he would share his testimony with us uh, for a few minutes and uh, Brother Rashid you have a ministry but can you tell us a little bit about your background where were you where you were born and uh, uh, and uh, what led you to the Lord I was born and raised in Morocco and uh, my dad was the Imam of the local mosque uh, Imam is like a pastor of a church so Imam is the, the same thing same role for a mosque he does everything for our village, uh, funerals, uh, marriages, uh, and, uh, teaching the Quran and leading the prayers. And I grew up like that until I uh, was uh, 12 years old. Then I was uh, following a program on Transworld Radio, TWR, at night. And uh, I started listening to a program and that provoked me. And I started correspondence courses with them that ended up with me giving my life to Jesus Christ. That's a summary, but you know, it's a long process. Yeah, but uh, so you were listening to a, to a program yeah. from America? No. To, to, or was it right there? It in, was broadcasted from Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo? Yeah, to okay. Morocco, because that's the closest they can get. Okay. So they can send the waves. And they used to do it just for half an hour at night. Mm -hmm. Nine o'clock Morocco's time, 9 p.m. And it was Ramadan, you know, in Ramadan we stayed late and I was staying late trying just to tune in and suddenly I hear something in Arabic and then I started focusing on the words and they were against my faith or at least contradict my mm -hmm. faith about Jesus and that was the first time I was exposed to uh, Jesus of the Gospel, not Jesus of the Quran. Of course, it, it, everything about Jesus and the Gospel contradicts the Jesus of the Quran and curiosity you can name it you can name it anything but i know it's the lord was drawing me uh towards him and that was you're young you were young in i was 12, years, 12 old. years old and you're listening and something prompted you to seek more and search yeah and uh, you started having doubts about your own faith and upbringing at the beginning it wasn't it was just trying to defend my faith and prove that they were wrong but I had no, no knowledge about Christianity so in order to have a good argument against them I have to know their faith so I can come up with uh, questions that will be tough for them they will not be able to answer it. of course I send them verses of uh, of the Quran about Jesus but they don't believe in the Quran mm -hmm. So I had to study Christianity in order to be able to reply. And that led me, each step led me deeper and deeper into another step. And the more I found out about Christianity, the less uh, certain about my view I became. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the more you study the Gospels, the more you'll be like, is this the book where uh, we are saying it's corrupt? Why it's beautiful in certain passages, especially the the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's uh, if it's not accurate, why um, Jesus seems very powerful in in the gospel, and also like uh, why didn't allow us to read it if it's that easy to 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 prove that it is false mm -hmm. why they are not letting us read it in morocco the, the the bible was not allowed it was not allowed so all these questions started coming up and also when i read about jesus being crucified i started comparing it to the quran and i thought i will be uh, it will be easy to prove that someone else uh, was crucified instead of him so when I went to the commentaries, I was surprised they are not sure. Mm -hmm. And they give all kind of explanations, this and that. Peter was crucified, one of the soldiers, Judas, and all kind of uh, contradicting mm -hmm. um, stories. And when you read the Gospels, it's clear. All of them, all the four Gospels are agreeing that the person who was on the cross was Jesus Christ himself. I was, I was confronted with the reality that our worldview about Jesus Christ as Muslims is very weak 
and not sustainable. Mm -hmm. And so one topic after the other led me to one day um, just giving up and saying that Christianity is the right path. How long to, was the process? It's four years. Four it was years. four years. Four years of digging yeah. and starting with trying to, to, to defeat and, and uh, disprove Christianity from the True. Bible. True. And, and then, yes. Also, one thing, it was not... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm discussing it right now from a rational point of view. But it was a lot of emotions mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, suffering and a lot of uh, doubts and a lot of tears, mm -hmm. and it, it, because it's painful when you mm -hmm. when you grow up grow up as a Muslim, then suddenly you start doubting your faith. Mm -hmm. People think it's easy. It's not easy. It's not an easy transition because you start losing the ground. You start losing faith in your society and everything you held dear to your heart. My dad is in wrong? My family? My society? How about my friends? My school? My schoolmates? So you start, so whom I should I trust? So where's the ground? You, it's like somebody trying to hold to something before falling and, and you get vertigo or something in you and you're trying to find balance mm -hmm. losing faith in Islam is losing a ground to stand on mm -hmm. and I needed something to hold into and that something was the gospel so I, I I went to it and I found I can rely on it I can put it as a reference something I can stand on mm -hmm. and continue my journey interesting is that, is that why so many Muslims hold on so tightly because it, it, it means so much because to a lot of people in the West we don't understand that Islam is the way of life it's everything it's the way you eat the way yeah. you every ritual everything you do is, is dictated by, by Islam so it's such you know it is it is basically abandoning everything your True. community your family everything right your True. traditions so yeah. it was very hard but when you made that decision I'm sure you were glad you made the decision because you found the truth mm -hmm. and that truth set you free. That's right. Uh, so what happened at 14 then? What, I mean, for, for 16. So what happened at 16? Well, uh, at first I kept a secret from my family as much as I can. And then, of course, you can't keep the faith secret for a long time. So one day I was, uh, my cousin sold me uh, to the family mm -hmm. and um, he snitched on me. and. Of course, at first, I was not expecting the reaction as it was. Mm -hmm. I had expectations that my family would get mad, but that's it. They would not do anything. But I was wrong. Um, so they gathered one day and they asked me the, the, a simple question. Are you a Muslim or a Christian? And I couldn't answer that. So my, my mom made a follow-up question and she said, just say the Shahada. The, that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the Prophet of Allah. Of course I couldn't say that. And then that was followed by insults and then uh, the crying and like it was a drama in the, in the house and they kicked me out. And I had to leave, the, not just my family, even the extended family, I couldn't live with anybody. I was like the, the outcast. Mm -hmm. And I lived homeless for two years. Wow. I couldn't. I couldn't find a place where to live. Um, uh, some friends helped every now and then. You know, you find few nights here, few nights there, but most of the time without a shelter. Hmm. And uh, it, it wasn't an easy transition at 16, 17 of, uh, of your age, and you lose like family is the is the protective unit for a person to to grow in and i couldn't uh my family turned against me wow yeah incredible, incredible. so then what happened after that Abu rashid so did you find a community of believers did you find a family in christ that, that supported you i found a community of believers and the the, the was the church underground and of course they tried to help as much as i can but most of them they were like um keeping their faith secret they just come on sunday and go back so 
Most of them, didn't, th their families didn't know much about them mm -hmm. or uh, about that part in their life. Um, the ones who, who uh, told their families they were like in a similar situation more or less. Mm -hmm. Um, mission, missionaries, on the other hand, they were able to host us in their homes and offer us a place where we can worship. Okay. Um, those helped a little bit. One of them, he, after two years, he said, like, just come and live with us. Mm -hmm. Of course, he took a risk because if the authorities find out that he's healthy and people convert, that will at least lead them to kick him out of the country, if not more... Um, put more charges on, on him. So uh, that helped me a lot because I lived with uh, the, the, the missionaries or the family that was serving God, but they were teachers, English yes, teachers yes. in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they helped me for three years. Mm -hmm. And that's where I grew up. And I, at least my life was back together instead of just a homeless kid in the streets mm -hmm. and my faith um, st I started learning from the believers around how to live uh, as a Christian how to pray mm -hmm. how to go deeper in in the Bible how to study the Bible all these and the meetings of course every every Sunday and we had like um, you know, Bible studies as mm -hmm. well during the week mm -hmm. so they were like kind of a source of joy and nurtured my my new life in, in Christ yeah. that's wonderful so you were growing and in and being discipled and growing in your relationship with the Lord by the way one of the beauties of Christianity is that you when you become a, a new believer in Christ you start loving everyone including yeah. your enemies right true, true. everyone on, on the outside which is not the case in Islam right yeah. so you are rejected and you know, where in, in Christianity we start loving the people from the outside because yeah. we, we love them so much we want them to experience what we've experienced. Yeah. That's a big difference. So, so then uh, that love for the lost, for people who didn't know, who were like you, grew up in, in, a Mus in, in, in a Muslim culture and religion, that love moved you to, to do more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Well, um, of course, um, receiving the gospel and uh, having an impact on your life and uh, your life gets changed, mm -hmm. then you will be like, now what? Um, should I just keep it my, for myself or share it? Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, all these questions uh, have consequences. So if I keep it for myself and do not take any risks, it's, it's not going to... Um, that's not what the gospel teaches first. Second, you are selfish. Third, you don't care about the, your family or if you really love those people, you yes. have to give them, if you, found, if you think and you believe you found something good, but don't keep it just for yourself. Share it with others. But of course, sharing it with others come, comes with risks. It comes with a lot of pain as well. Believing is one thing, sharing is another thing. So I dealt with the believing part and I, I took the responsibility and I suffered for it, but I, I was hesitating for a little bit. But then I, I said, um, the disciples suffered as well. Without them, we will not get the gospel today. So I had to follow their steps. And we started sharing a little bit in Morocco. Then after a while, I was exposed I had to leave the country and then I found a better way to share from overseas and it's um, TV. Mm -hmm. and that's when I started my weekly program and I started doing uh, uh, comparative studies between Islam and Christianity, bringing a topic, comparing it between Islam and Christianity and then opening the phone for people to call in. And that when did you start that brother Rashid? I started in 2006. 2006, 16 years ago. Yeah, 16 years ago. It, it was it was uh, quite a ride. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Did you start in s certain countries and then it, it just kept keep spreading or? You you know satellite free to air. You can catch it. Uh, you can get it in any country you want. Since uh, if we we broadcast it on Hotbird first and another. Uh, satellite that covers the Arab world mm -hmm. and um, so you can 
get it wherever you are in Saudi Arabia or Morocco or uh, Iraq or, or Egypt or even if you live in France and you have free to air satellite dish so we started receiving phone calls from all these countries at once when we open phones you find Jordanians calling, Iraqis, Moroccans, Algerians, Tunisians, Egyptians, all of them, different dialects, but all of them. Uh, well, one of the good things about these programs, they are some kind of provocative, mm -hmm. but in the same time, they are uh, they deal with the same questions that I dealt with when I was comparing yes. Islam and Christianity. Yes. So some people find, they, they relate to me. They'll be like, I had the same question. I have the same question. I, I want to share it with you. And some people, of course, resist and they start arguing with, with me or insulting me or telling me traitor and all kind of names. But it's like fishing. You will find a good fish and a bad fish. Yeah. And that's what we started doing. Yes, and we're called fisher of men. Yeah. And so we cast the net and we don't never know. You don't who, know. Who, it's the Lord who catches, you know, yeah. we're just we're there to just throw the net. Yeah. So could you tell us uh, maybe uh, one or two arguments from Muslims to Christianity that you could answer quickly? Yeah. And also uh, maybe one or two testimonies of the stories because those are very encouraging of yeah. people who have called in. And I, I know you have, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of them, but maybe a couple of stories would be wonderful. Yeah, well, one of the main questions that I, uh, I receive from Muslims, they will be like, you are associating a man with God. You worship a man who goes to the bathroom. Which they, is they, shirk, they, which is one of the greatest sins. Shirk, yeah, it's the greatest sin you can, you can commit. Um, of course, the answer to, the, to that, we don't worship a man, because if you believe Jesus was only a man that's your islamic belief christianity believes that jesus is uh the word of god is not just a man he appeared in the flesh as a man but he's not just a man he was before the incarnation he existed forever and he's going to continue like that so if you if you are telling me i'm worshiping a man i'm not I'm worshiping God who appeared in the flesh. And I'm not associating anybody with God because Jesus is the Word of God. You don't associate the Word of God with God because forever God existed with His Word. Mm -hmm. I, this is most like summarized answer to that question. Another one is you worship three gods, which is almost similar. Mm -hmm. You worship uh, three gods, the Trinity. Of course, if you read the Quran, the Trinity that is mentioned in the Quran has nothing to do with the Christian Trinity. It's uh, God, Mary, and the Son. It's like a physical relationship and um, a father and a mother and a son. And I always tell them, give me just one verse of the Quran that refuses the Christian Trinity, mm -hmm. the traditional Orthodox one. You will find none. Okay, if you are telling me we worship three gods, that's not the truth. Again, we worship God, His Word, His Spirit. Those are one. They are not three gods. One God. And all, they always have, it's hard for them to counter that. It's because it's it's very solid, it's biblical, it's very simple. And it's also Quranic when you say it's, those things, because many people may not know, yeah. you're referring to things that are actually in the Quran. written in the Quran. Jesus is the word of God, that's by by the Quran. Mm -hmm. you which, find it which, in how do they explain that? You know, How do Muslims explain they that he's the word of God? They say uh, because he was created by the word of God, but that's like a twist. It's not because he was created by the Word of God. All of us were created by the Word of God. None of us can be called the Word of God. Only Jesus is the Word of God. Satan was created by the Word of God. The first pig was created by the Word of God. We don't call him. Earth was created by the Word of God. We don't call Earth the Word of God. Only Jesus is mentioned in the Quran because they took it from the Gospel of John. In the beginning, it was the Word. And, and because they took that, they didn't know the consequences of using the Logos, the Word of God. It has 
in it, it's embedded in it mm -hmm. that he is God because God never existed with, without his word. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's that. Uh, for for the, the stories, um, we had, of course, thousands of stories. One of them I had uh, recently that um, one of the ISIS fighters called. And that's not an unusual call. I get people, Muslims, who convert that I get it very often, but you get a fighter with ISIS, and he is willing to give his life to Jesus Christ. Of course, we had to deal with the, the, the security side of it, but also the spiritual side of it. There are consequences when you do something like that, and I'm not going to talk about them because that's a different thing but I'm going to talk about the spiritual side when the guy he said I'm repenting I'm trying to get my life together and I'm trying to follow God and I found you on YouTube while I was searching videos about other stuff she had and stuff but I found you and now I believe I was wrong not just in doing um, joining that group but also in my belief system mm -hmm. And that's the root of it, he said. So I want to get rid of all of it, and I just want to be a follower of Christ. So I helped him in, in that sense, in, in, in the spiritual sense. That was, for me, it was a shock that our work is not just saving people, it's saving humanity. Imagine if, if terrorists are followers of Absolutely. Christ. Absolutely. So it's, it's helping terrorists also... Because some of them are, are uh, they have a zeal for God, of course, and they they, th they think they are doing good mm -hmm. by joining uh, joining terrorist groups. But if we show them that God is not like that, He's not mm -hmm. demanding them to kill people in yes. His name, mm -hmm. we can change a whole life yes. uh, of a person mm -hmm. and and save him from a destructive uh, path. That's one one story. Another story during the pandemic. I was, um, uh, I'll say I was shocked as everybody that everything stopped at once. Right. And even ministry stopped somehow because we the studios closed and everything. Mm -hmm. So I had to do stuff from home. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, it's limited. There, there are so many things, uh, limitation. And I said probably uh, people will not be interested now. Everybody now talking about death everywhere, mm -hmm. about talking about the virus. Who's going to? Uh, talk about Christianity or Islam now it's the, at the bottom of the list it's not a priority I was I was wrong the views went five times higher five times higher and then I received the first email I received during the pandemic a lady from Kuwait she said I had to sit at home and I wasn't able to work so I just googled mm -hmm. and followed YouTube videos mm -hmm. and I found you she said and she said, day and night, I'm playing videos. And now I want to be a follower of Christ. Wow. So I said, God, even in the middle of this pandemic, mm -hmm. you, you are bringing us some good out of it. That's beautiful. So probably the lady wouldn't have a chance mm -hmm. to sit at home yes. and watch. Mm -hmm. But even something bad, God can... Um, uh, bring good. bring good out of it. Amen. And we know that. Yes, we, we know, know, two, we, we know two that. Two of my favorite <laughs> verses are Genesis 50-20, which says, what you meant, in Joseph's story, so yes. what you meant for evil, God meant for, for good. Yes. And then Romans 8, 28, you know, yes. and uh, uh, oh, that oh. you know things work for good for those who love God. Yes. And so what seemed like an evil, which was an evil, right? Yeah. Because he brought people to depression True. and alcoholism and yeah. whatever it is, you know, yeah. uh, being, being locked down. Yeah. But he also opportunities, because yeah. now people had time to to really look at in, in, you know in their lives and, yeah. and look into what do they believe and that's the beautiful that. side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the beautiful it's an, side. It's amazing. Of it. And uh, so, uh, Brother Rashid, uh, how can people follow you? I know that most of your th things online are in Arabic. Yes, in but, I, but I'm translating some segments mm -hmm. into English, and mm -hmm. I'm going to do more in English. More in English. Yes. Okay, how can do they find out about you? Uh, just type Brother Rashid on Google, mm -hmm. you'll find my page, um, brotherrashid.com, and you can follow. It has two sites, Arabic and English, so mm -hmm. you can switch to the English one. Yes. 
Uh, if you know Arabic, that's good. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you don't, then you have to learn it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah. it, uh, uh, I will appreciate prayers, yes. and, and I will appreciate people follow me. I'm uh, I'm on Twitter as well, mm -hmm. Rashid. Uh, mm -hmm. You can follow me. Sometimes I tweet in English. Sometimes in Arabic. You have a button to translate. Yes. So it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> on Facebook as well, we uh -huh. have uh, stuff on Facebook. Uh, we have, I think, two million followers on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So uh, on YouTube, you'll find videos. Mm -hmm. Good. Just type Brother Rashid. Yeah. And uh, it's wonderful because it's so exciting. You know, uh, I I've known Brother Rashid for a few years, and uh, uh, we went to France, spoke at some conferences. And it was really beautiful because we baptized an imam in yeah. France and he's yeah. doing very well and he's serving the Lord and speaking all around the world. And that course, you know, that seed you plant, he was going this way, but that seed, yeah. you know, took him a different direction. And, and yeah. I debate Muslims like you do, and I like to debate radical Muslims, Salafi That's Muslims, cool. because in them I see a potential, uh, like yeah. a Paul, Apostle Paul, yeah. who was killing Christians, persecuting the church, and then when he got transformed, he blessed the church in two different directions. And that's yeah. why I admire your work. And uh, uh, final, final words, do you have, um, a, a, you know, for Muslims who are watching us, uh, because this, this channel I have with uh, Brother Frank, we have this church, we started the Church of Fire, and he is a former Muslim who came to me and asked me to baptize him. And he uh, is from Uzbekistan. That's and really he good. is on fire for the Lord. And we have this, you know, channel, and a lot of Muslims are watching. So, what message do you have for Muslims, you know, who are watching? What message would you have for them as a, a uh, for closing Muslims, words? For Muslims, I always say, seek the truth. Don't uh, take uh, whatever Islam says uh, for um, as as uh, as a truth, because um, being born as a Muslim doesn't mean that you believe the truth, um, or your faith is the true mm -hmm. path to God. Um, just seek God from your heart. Just um, open up uh, your heart. Give give Christ a, a chance. Give Christianity a chance. Search it from all your heart. Compare between Islam and Christianity. The life of Muhammad, the life of Jesus, you will see a contrast. And I don't think um, uh, it will lead you towards Islam. It will lead you towards Christ. I experienced that firsthand. And I have seen thousands who went through that and they found out that uh, Islam is not the way to God, it's uh, Christ himself. So, um, and also don't be mad because um, I love you personally, I love Muslims. I always say I love Muslims, but I don't agree that Islam is the path to God. Um, challenging Islam doesn't mean I hate Muslims, it's the other way around. Because I love Muslims, I'm doing what I'm doing. And even when I receive insults and death threats, I still love them because they are fa my family. That's, uh, that's where I grew up, that's where I was born, and I have a big love for them. So God bless you, and I pray that your journey will lead you to Christ. Amen. I, I, I can't say it any better. So Thank it you. is true that we love people, and just because we speak against an ideology, I like to compare it to people who say, why do you hate Muslims? And I always tell them, when I speak against communism, does that mean I hate Cubans? Yeah. I don't. No. But somehow, when it comes to religion, people cannot differentiate the two, right? Je no, Je it's, it, it, Jesus loved sinners, but he hated sin. Mm -hmm. It's the same way. Same way. So be encouraged and, uh, and uh, uh, seek the truth, because the Bible tells us if you seek with all your heart and love your mind, all your, you know, that God will reveal himself to you. And there's Amen. a relationship there. It's not a blind obedience to a, to a God that's distant. God loves us. He wants a relationship with us. And, and Brother Rashid found this as a Muslim, former Muslim. I found it as an atheist. And, and there's a transformation that is, cannot even be explained. It's, it's a transformation that comes from within. Religion shows you a good outside, you know, a facade, a clean facade, but you know, the, the Lord Jesus transforms the heart from within. And, and I'm so glad that he touched your life, Brother Rashid. I'm glad that you're my friend, my brother in Christ. Thank we're gonna you. spend eternity together. And I'm glad we're spending some time as friends here on earth too. Yes. And I just, uh, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you're doing, your thank faithfulness, you. because so many people 
uh, the Bible warns us to, to, to finish strong and to be faithful servants, to finish strong. And, and I pray for you. Please pray for Brother Rashid because it is not easy. What he's doing is not easy. I'm not going to get into details, but you can only imagine how hard it is uh, with everything he's gone through. But please pray for him and pray for his family, for his health and, and, and for salvation and that God will continue to use him for his glory. And uh, thank you, Brother Rashid. I love you dearly. Thank you. Thank you. God bless God you. God bless you all. Bye. Bye.